Hi guys, I'm uh, Maestro Miles UK and this is my first YouTube video where I'll be reviewing the iPad Pro 12.9 inches as a, um, as, as a sheet music replacement. So you might be a conductor or a musician. So I want to talk about how easy it is to, uh, to go from essentially sheet music to having all of that electronically stored within the tablet and using that for rehearsals, um, for, for, for gigs, um, and, and or maybe your own personal practice as well. You know, so, so, so what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? What apps have I been using? So I got this tablet about two months ago now, and I've been using it, um, trying to use it as my only um, uh, source of music since. Um, so I can talk about how easy I found that and, and, and what some of the challenges were. So, but first of all, I'd just like to clarify why I picked the iPad Pro um, rather than some of the other tablets on the market. For example, the Microsoft Surface 4. Well, the Surface 4 is smaller. Uh, slightly and I do think that that makes a difference because it's it's nearly an inch smaller diagonally and um, and and even even this iPad Pro when you compare it to an A4 sheet of paper probably the overall frame it's probably it's probably about the same it's slightly bigger actually um, but the actual but then when you when you look at the screen real estate Definitely, definitely, ha it has to make even the A4 slightly smaller to um, to appear on there. Now, I think with the Surface 4, I think that that probably would be, um, you, you know, it, it would be bordering on um, too small there. Um, the other option was the Surface Book, which I would very, very much toy with the idea of getting, to be honest. Um, but it is significantly, this is expensive, but the Surface Book is significantly more expensive. I already have a laptop. I, I couldn't justify the extra, the extra money for that. So that's why, that's why I went, went for this in the end. Um, a lot of the other tablets you'll find, they might be 12 inches, 13 inches. There's a number of 13 inch uh, Samsung tablets now, I think. But a lot of them have got that wide screen aspect ratio and not this 4-3. Not this uh, or is it two three aspect ratio that's a bit more uh, closer to 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 a, to a sheet of A4 paper? Um, so very very light tablet. Just getting back to that. Just adding that back case. It's so it's just a silicon official Apple one, but that has made it significantly more significantly heavier as a, as, a, as an overall package. And then again, I've got the I've got the keyboard display as well. Sorry, keyboard smart cover. The, the, good, the good news is, is the fact that really when you're conducting or using a sheet, sheet music, you don't need this, this smart cover. You know, it's, only, it's only really there to protect the front for that purpose. So you can just literally pull it off. So getting onto, um, onto the apps I've been using, I'll just quickly talk through uh, TurboScan. You can very easily um, scan music into this, uh, into this app very, very quickly and then move it over to Fourscore, which we'll come on to in a second. So it has uh, three ways of, of putting your music in there. Either you can use a saved photo that you've got from some other source, and then you've got two ways of capturing the image. A single photo, or this three times photo, where the, where the iPad will take three photos in quick succession and then analyze all three and then essentially get a get a more accurate uh, overall picture rather than just taking that one. So I'll just show you here with this with this Vorjak 7 Symphony um, uh, trombone part, randomly enough. So I'll just put that down on the dark surface. I'll just select the three times scan there and just need to put it so the entire document is within scope of the camera. Click the button. It'll take three photographs in quick succession. And there you go. It's 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 all there. Quality of this scan is very good. You can choose the you can choose the the uh, the brightness of the of the overall thing. So typically, I, I I tend to go for a for one of these one of these uh, quite light levels because it allows you to see the detail of the notes a bit better. And you can just click on the next page on this app, and you can start to build up your your your, your PDF as you go along. Um, it's 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 a it's a quite a relatively quick thing to do. You can probably get over about 30 pages within um, within, within, within two or three minutes. Um, the only thing I would say is the iPad to use is then quite heavy to, to kind of have it, have it uh, you know, uh, hovering in that position for, 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 so, for so long. But 
not not really a problem for me to be honest. Um, okay, going on to four score, which is where you'll have all your music, um, or, or where I chose to have all my music. Sorry, there are there are other apps out there, but this is this is a very good one, one that you can, um, I think see that this was designed by musicians for musicians i'm not i can't i can't say hand on heart that's definitely the case but that's that's how it feels when you look at this because the options that they've got are so good you've got uh, metronomes in here you've got tuning devices you can you can give each one of your documents um you know you can put all details into it so you've got your title a composer a genre um Add a tag. So in the case for me, I had I had a particular concert, and I gave everything that I was um, playing in that concert a particular tag. Or you might want to say sad music, or happy music, or bluesy music, or something like that. Um, even things like you can you can record the time there or the key. There are there are there are an awful lot of things that you can uh, kind of ca catalogue your music, and then that of course that gives you really good advantage to search. Um, you know, you know, later or, or maybe maybe build up some sort of uh, set list. Um, so 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 you can do, you can do all these things. Turning a page when you when you are going through your music. So you just simply have to tap at the, at the side when you're ready to go. You can go backwards exactly the same. Um, it's quite responsive, so I can tap several pages in front, several pages at the back um, to go back. Um, I would. Uh, as with everything, you know, using this in a rehearsal, you can feel very confident about it. Your first concert, now I've done two concerts using this iPad Pro. Both times I had the, uh, the, the sheet music underneath my chair, just, as, just in case. But I'm beginning to feel a lot more confident about it, to be honest. And I think the usual things would apply, like, if it was the, if it was the week before the concert and I hadn't and I knew I wasn't going to get that much chance to to use this app, I might not do say a software update in that time or you know of both, of both the app and the iOS because I just want to have that confidence that it's most likely going to go you know it's, it's going to work, and then maybe also do a a full um, uh, maybe like a full shutdown restart bef before that concert so I knew the memory was clean things like that, but I, I've not had any sort of problem. With, with this, it's been a very, very um, a stable app and stable iOS, uh, you know, st stable OS um, to begin with. Now, the pencil now really comes into its own with this because if you if you um, if you're playing this part, for example, and you want to you know you want to make some notes, the conductor's told you, giving you some advice, or or or, you, or you're practicing, it's very easy. I notice I've got my palm resting on this and nothing has registered, it's not started to draw or anything like that. But as soon as the pencil makes contact, and that's a horrible big thick black um, um, marker there, there which, which, uh, which probably doesn't look great, but you know, you know if, if I was being told that these sports sandos needed to be a bit louder, I wanted to accentuate that, I can, I can, I can make sure that they are, that they're, that they're ringed. Um, um, you can also highlight music. Like that. This pencil is extremely it's pinpoint accurate, so it's it's very very easy to use. Not so easy to draw on the music stand, but to be honest, I have exactly the same experience with paper. I would always prefer to pick up the paper, put it on my knee, and 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 do it that way. Um, so, so so maybe maybe if you can write on a music stand quite quite stable, uh, you know, quite quite well with your hands, you'd probably be all right with this. It's just it's just my my own personal performance there. Um, so, so that's very good. If you've got something which has happened a few times, and you've and th th this this toolbar here, which t which uh, which you know is um, it, it tells you which pen you're going to use, for example, you can move that around so you can get behind here at the top, um, and then move it back up. So I'll just uh, I'll just back out of these changes there, um, and then afterwards you just click done. Now this is one issue that I do have a bit of a problem with uh, with four score, and I think it's definitely an improvement. So it's very clever. It knows when my palm's touching it, and then as soon as I put the pencil on it, it understands that. But it doesn't happen the other way around. So if I then want to change the page, it thinks I'm still well. Well, it thinks I'm still in edit mode. So that it that to me is is definitely room for an improvement. I don't know why you'd start off 
drawing something with, with the Apple Pencil and then switch to your finger to, to also mark it. This is a lot more accurate and it's going to be here. And there's been a few times where I have started to amend this, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, we're starting again, clarinet up, and then I've gone to turn the page and we're still in, still in this edit mode. So, so, so that's something that I think um, Fourscore could maybe be better at. Um, another advantage, though, of Fourscore, I will just show you here, are these buttons. Now, um, I won't be using my Apple Pencil for that, I'll be using my finger. So, so these buttons here, what they, what they, what they, you can edit them in all sorts of ways. You can, um, you, they're basically like action buttons. But in this case, obviously I'll be playing along this, this bottom line here, and I've actually got a uh, very short rest to, to, to turn this page. And as quick as it is, just to just to point on your music stand, um, it's I've only I've only got a crotchet and a half. So this button here, what I can do is press that as I'm coming up to it, and I get a suitable moment, and it will deliver half a page at the top. And then I just have to um, tap that again when I'm in a suitable rest afterwards, and then I'm on my next page. So that's quite a useful um, little trick that they've that they've used to get around there. On the whole, I'm very impressed with Fourscore. There are a few other areas of improvement that I think Fourscore could could look at. One of which is um, is is when, as, as I'm a you know, as I've conducted in the past, you might be running through a score and you may not want to stop the play to you know the, the rehearsal to actually look at that specific bit, but you want to come back to it at the end. So I was quite intrigued when I saw that this had a bookmark functionality. Now. The bookmark functionality isn't great, um, uh, in my opinion. I think it could be a lot more um, intuitive, a lot more, uh, a lot. You know, it could, it could, it could definitely expand on that functionality. And what I'd be interested in doing is having some sort of option where I could go along, and maybe I could, um, you know, just circle something like this, or, or, or even just, just somehow add a bookmark as I was going along, at rehearsing the piece, and then. You know, a few pages later, and I do the same thing, and then there'd be some option to say, on page two you wanted to look at something, on page seven you wanted to look at something, on page ten, and and that to me would be a really useful thing as a conductor. Something that in the past I would have just done a quick scribble on the on the paper copy, and then had to go through and find where I wanted to be, and you know these these scores can be hundreds of pages long, so it's um so. You know, you know, I, I think there's definitely a. Uh, um, you know, an option there to, to do that. But, but, but on the whole, I think Fourscore does, it's certainly the minimum that you need to do, and it does, it does, you know, it does more than that, really. It's, it is a very powerful tool. Um, so, I'll just quickly show you how to get a piece of music in Fourscore, so I can show you how easy that is. So if I just go into... Um, IMSLP, and we'll choose, let's choose another Beethoven, we'll choose, choose Beethoven 5, okay? So a quick Google search, click on that link, and then here we'll do parts, because it'll be typically smaller than a, than a score, so I'll get my clarinet parts, I'll click on that. So we're now ready, I'll click, I'll click to download it, and there it is. So you see, you've got your typical PDF options there, open in books and open in with dot dot dot. So I just click on that and I just choose four score there, copy to four score. And there you go. And it's and, and now that's in four score permanently until you delete it. And uh, you can just um you know you can you can just begin to play it. Other disadvantage I would say is when you've got a very busy score in particular, and obviously on on some pages you might only have a couple of bars if it's a big cadenza or something like that. So you, typically I'd want to know a little bit more in you know what's coming up in the future. Um, so so when you're when you when you've got your you know your book as uh, your score book you'd have that that that's that second page to, to know so you'd have a little bit more visibility there but but really it's it, it certainly does the job very well. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry I've rambled on for so long and um, and please send me any thoughts or comments you have on, uh, on on the iPad Pro. If you've got experience using the iPad Pro, or you're thinking about doing it, I'd be I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.